Crossroads Media. We hear that Fletcher Cox is retiring, and it's a shame, man, that we are starting to lose these very important pieces to the franchise and to the entire city. And, you know, there was a time where Fletcher Cox was one of the best defensive tackles in the entire game. You had Aaron Donald, who destroyed human beings, and then there was Fletcher Cox. He was that much of a force. He was that demanding. He would go up against teams that were scared as hell, that would probably vomit in fear knowing it's going to be a tough task holy shit I got to deal with Fletcher Cox and then you try and double team him he mows both of you down before he does the army crawl celebration and the link goes berserk so I don't know if there is this not recency bias, but yeah, no, exactly, recency bias, uh, because the last few years there were fans that said it's time to give up on the Fletch experience and let's move on and let's stop bringing back the same older vets and, you know, you can make the argument he was the best defensive player on your entire team last year, and yeah, a lot of that is because of disgusting play around him, but both can be true, where he still played well, I still think he has some left in the tank, I truly do. He could still be a force. He could still be within a rotation. He could still play reasonable ball. All right? He's not in his prime anymore, but he absolutely can help out a team. He doesn't hurt you. His presence isn't, oh man, Fletch is really running out of gas, but we have to play him because he loves this logo and because this city means the world to him and because of what he's done in his career. No, the second he's got his hands in the dirt, I mean, he's giving your squad an advantage still, and he's better than a lot of the guys that he lines up against. So, you know, it's going to hurt. It just sucks because this is what I know. I grew up, and it was Fletcher Cox, Brandon Graham, it was Jason Kelsey. That was my entire life, essentially. You know, I was born in 95, so by the time you really start to understand and get a grasp on sports differently than, whoa, this is awesome, and you start breaking it down to a different level because your brain is maturing along the way, although you can make the argument that that may have not happened. <laughs> But here we are, and I'm looking at a team without Fletcher Cox and Jason Kelsey next year, and that is damaging to an entire locker room, especially coming off of last season where, let's be honest, who was the one publicly really singing the praise for Sirianni? Jason Kelsey said all great things. Fletcher Cox said all great things. And, you know, they're pros, pros, and that's why they have the respect that they have and that's why we love them and that's why they have helped with the culture for years now is because they are people who will be willing to stand up and say, hey, I love that guy, even if it's not necessarily true. And I have no idea. Honestly, I don't know. I'm sure they feel a lot more positive on Nick Sirianni than I do, but they are willing to fall on the sword for others in the organization and that describes the human beings that we are losing in the room. And, you know, I've talked talked about this before that maybe it's a good thing just because it's a passing of the torch and don't get me wrong I don't want it to end if I can have those two lace them up for 45 years and never dip off and we just get their prime forever then I want it but all good things do come to an end and I wonder if you force Jalen Hurts to be uncomfortable not having those shoulders to lean on and you still have BG and you'll still have Lane Johnson it's not as if the whole thing is gone and poof you're starting at ground zero there still are a few pieces in place and Vic Fangio has been around the game for a long time I do believe that Kellen Moore walks into the Novacare complex and there is a lot of respect around because you look at some of the statistics on paper with Dallas and what he was able to provide I'm sure they built yo I, I've seen this cat draw up some good stuff I've seen this dude put together an offense that really helped a uh, Amari Cooper or any of those nice names skill position wise now you start to get excited if you're Devontae Smith and AJ Brown because it should be significant 
significantly different from the garbage and the crap that we saw last season under Sirianni and Brian Johnson. So, you know, there's other things there. But getting Jalen Hurts now to sort of get pushed into the fire. Yo, dude, all right, there's no more leaning on Kelsey. And, and I'm not saying this in like a negative way as if Jalen Hurts can't lead. I'm, I'm just thinking about what needs to happen. And there's no doubt that Jalen Hurts has to take another step. And if you have to do it because other guys are deciding I no longer feel like playing I no longer think this is best I feel I should be with my family and it's my time well what better way than hey it's yours it's yours go take it go shut up all those rumors shut up every single columnist in the city all the sports talk radio heads that you despise that apparently you know you listen 24 7 which hey I appreciate don't get me wrong but at the same time I wouldn't be bothered in it wouldn't hurt my feelings if A.J. Brown decided to tune me out, decided it's not worth it, decided I don't really need to hear the 50,000 people that call in on a weekly basis to discuss our football team. Don't worry about it. Just worry about what Nick Sirianni's telling you, what your coach is telling you, what your teammates are doing. Just focus in-house, and I promise you it'll probably be better for you. All right, stay off the Twitter. Stay off the tweeting. You're not getting hacked again. I don't want to deal with this. I almost knocked over half of my coffee and I would have been pissed. Pissed. I was in a good mood. I had a good couple of days hanging out with Brooklyn. We've been oh man, chilling, relaxing, hanging out, a little father daughter time. I mean, it's just incredible stuff. And I was feeling great. That would have put a huge damper to end my week. Or is this really to start my week? See, I think of Monday as starting my week. Saturday and Sunday you're hitting the refresh. This doesn't even technically count as me starting the week, but that's not really something you care about, is it? No, because we're trying to figure out where the Philadelphia Eagles go from here, and I would like to see Jalen Hurts shut everybody up and really take this locker room by his grasp, and it might not be in his DNA, and it might be a collaborative effort with AJ and Slay and Lane and BG, and that does scare me. There's no denying it that I don't love the idea idea of A.J. Brown and Darius Slay having huge voices on this team. Jalen's a quiet guy. Jalen leads by example. Jalen leads just by going into, you know, his film room every single day and his studying and his ability to always be thinking about football 24-7, that's the inspiration that the team has because if you think about taking a shortcut, if you think about what can I do maybe to get this workout done quicker, you think of Jalen Hurts, and then that is what should motivate you to be the best version of yourself, right? And if that's the case, and A.J. Brown and Darius Slay start to have bigger roles, that's not my favorite style of identity, I like the idea of Fletcher Cox, Brandon Graham, Lane, and Jason. That hits different to me from an outsider looking in compared to Slay, who when they lose by 30, quote, tweets pro football focus so he can tell the fans to chill out and he only allowed two receptions on nine targets so it's not his fault they got blown out by 30. That's the guy that's going to be more vocal and that annoys me big. I just don't think that that's good. 